Ali Reza Farooja plays the King's Indian and the Karo Khan as Black. This is an Ali Reza Farooja rating climb style video. I want to play like him. So my closest attempt is to play openings that he plays and to unleash our tactics. This chess rating climb will help take you from 900 to 1000 in your own games. All games are 5 minutes per side. This video will help you a lot because I explain my moves as I play them live. The final part, you will see a tactic to win a queen in only 15 moves. See you at the end. Knight f3, knight f6. We keep playing like Ferruja in this rating climb. Ferruja plays the king's Indian, so let's keep going. And in castle, one, two, three, four, let's go. My opponent is also playing the king's Indian setup. So d6, we have this triangle, and we also have this triangle, which we discussed in the first video. Knight c6 putting pressure in the center, also I can go e5. My opponent is playing quickly as well. 1053 rating. My opponent might be thinking of d5, but then I can go knight b4 to attack it. Right, here we go. My opponent is solid doesn't want to commit with a move like d5 so I'm going to strike in the center with e5 I'm not afraid of this capture because after take my opponent doesn't have a center anymore I don't mind if the Queens come off and if I'm right in saying Magnus Carlsen had white in a position like this against Ferruja not this setup not this pawn structure that was here and then this Bishop could actually come out to g5 b4 getting space also attacking the knight and then you're going to take on e5 now i can play a move like a6 to stop it i'm just wondering if there's something a lot stronger for example like knight in the middle and if b5 the knight can go to the edge that looks quite interesting i don't have to go for it by will because this video has to be super instructive for you i could play a normal move like a6 to stop b5 but i'm going to go knight d5 because the bishop defends the pawn and if the pawn goes forward i can put the knight on the side e4 i see right to be honest i completely missed that move but not to worry i can retreat the knight now if i put it here then i've got a square to work with later so i'm going to go for that to be honest it's a bit unusual for me i don't normally have two knights on the queen side but we keep going this is a backward pawn because my opponent has launched their pawn this is a weakness now i can go here and that square belongs to black one two three and also this bishop can control this amazing diagonal another option is to play a move like a6 to break up the structure here that is not a great bishop because it's just defending a pawn so here two options knight here or knight here so let's just pick one let's go in when i play a move like knight c4 this knight can't move i can play a6 because if this capture happens the rook can come in and then now the rook is on the file the reason my position is much better is because of this backward pawn bishop g5 good move my opponent is changing their mind now i'm going to play f6 this bishop is blocking is being blocked in front of its own pawn but it doesn't matter because in the king's indian sometimes there's going to be a pawn here and i'm just going to retreat it one two and my opponent has blundered structurally because if you put a bishop on this square and i have a knight to take it and i can mess up your pawn structures i will take this is so weak now a couple of ways to attack it one two or one two three and they're uh, both ways look good now i'm not really too sure which one i think this one is better because then it actually stops the knight coming here so i'm actually going to go for this yeah bishop here this is going to be a long-term weakness so my position is very healthy in terms of structure because my pawns are much better let's attack and my opponent might have to play a tragic move like king here Rookie one is possible, to be fair. T4. 
target. I'm going to come in with this. So then the rook is in the file, is on the open file. The bishop can hear controlling a light square. Black's position is for choice. I would say black is close to being strategically winning. I feel that black is completely winning here because all of white's pawns are messed up. You can't just launch your pawns like this. c4 now i can take with check my opponent has missed it and then i can take the other pawn as well so i've just won two pawns in two moves let's go can't play rook here to attack the knight because of this ah that's why he's in okay now the knight's coming in fair play so i'm going to stop this with a move like c6 or even bishop e6 now which one is better i think c6 because then the knight can't come in take take let's go for this transition I'm two pawns up but I still got to win it a5 coming in with a6 possible rook d3 is there to challenge the knight interesting very interesting now where can this go if it go it can go here but then the bishop can actually sneak out so that's I might not want to give my opponent that chance so I'm actually going to place the bishop here to stop my opponent coming out. Yeah, and also I'm controlling the c4 square. I'm defending the knight at the moment anyway. So two pawns up, let's finish it off. The knight can't actually come in because of the bishop. The rook can't attack it because my knight defends it. So it's, it's going very well. By the way, this rook used to defend that knight, so I think I can take it now. Now I'm three pawns up. Take, take, totally fine. Because I'm so many pawns up, let's just put, let's just park the bishop and now let's run him down. That's it, mate, that's it. I can even bring this knight in here to, to get support. So that's, that's cool. So for example, here and then here. And if bishop f1 to attack it, I can play a move like b5 just to make sure everything is being defended. I feel like in a position like this, my opponent has no chance. And b5. Take, and I take with a bishop. Now, I'm just going to assist my pawns home. I do have one minute, so i got to speed up. One option, get the king in. because I'm not sure how to continue yet. So let's just improve the pieces. Rook in next. And then maybe here I win the other pawn. Right in here, is that a threat? Well, let's just stop him. Why do I need to give my opponent any chance? Now I'm ready to run the pawn. By the way, this knight is not really in time. I can just still run it. 58 seconds, right here. I can just defend that. Yeah, why mess about? Oh gosh, I didn't see that. Jeez. Right, let's tuck back. I need to control that square. Right. Messing this up a little bit, to be honest. Yeah. Damn. All right. B4. Right, let's go. 46 seconds against 46. Let's go. Finish off. Just come back, finish, run. 37 seconds against 26, gotta finish it off. Here, B3, and my opponent resigns, fantastic. We have the advance, Caro, again. G4, with this early, g4 if i go bishop here e6 is actually a very nice pawn sacrifice so let's actually go back here and now i think it's time to break up the structure straight away with a move like h5 maybe early f4 hmm very interesting i wonder what Ferruja would do here okay let's go queen c8 
attack the pawn. Now I've f5, that, that's exactly what I was hoping for. Now I go h5. You can tell I was thinking for a long time. Look at this expansion, it's just too much. Seven moves. Pushing all your pawns, but that one drops. We have a triangle structure. That's a pawn. Check. Drop it back. If you don't know, it can go all the way back. Yes, because I don't want a bishop coming out, so it's fine. Here. Let's get in. Hit the rook. Why is my opponent just making pawn moves? Let's take the rook. Take. Let's just drop it back. Right in the center. One, two, took the rook. Right now, let's take with the knight. Right in the center. One, two, castle, we're good. Here, here, game. Take g6. Every pawn on a light square. Take. Offer a trade. Don't see why not. Take. Pin. Take. Take the center pawn. Take. Check. If king here, I, I want to mate very quickly. King e7. Right, check. In, king up. Right, now that's mate. Rook e1 only move. And we're in. Black Mardima. Interesting. Is my opponent going to play the Black Mardima? Right. Let's play like Ferruja in this rating climb. F3 and now it's going to go E4. Fascinating. Interesting. Yeah, let's go D5. See what he's got. Black Mardima. I haven't faced it yet. So this is an opening gambit where white gets the center at the cost of a pawn, but then it's gonna get quite fast development. So knight c3, if it's white's move again, they will get the center. So one cool way to react is actually you defend with the bishop. Let me just make sure, should I defend with the bishop or play something sensible? By the way, if you guys are uncertain, you can always go e3. Because after take, then the knight is not going to go to the f3 square. So that's actually one way to react. But I'm going to take. I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to play like Ferruja, and he plays the king's Indian. So what do we notice? If we look at this position, good move, coming in here to attack f7. It's like a king's Indian. My opponent is getting very fast play with this Black Mar D Mar Gambit. So I'm going to play e6. I think I have to. Don't want to cast. I could just castle though. Hmm. Maybe I should castle. Yeah, why not? Because when that happens, I am protecting f7 with the rook. So I, I am up a pawn, and my opponent plays this capture which is wrong because you're giving up a bishop and a knight for a rook even though it's six points each the knight and the rook are worth a lot more my opponent is very aggressive by the way i can take that pawn it just feels a little risky i could actually get my knight out first so if you're not sure about grabbing a pawn it's actually good to get out a piece first so should i should i do that now what's wrong with grabbing bishop here then the queen can just move back let's say here or here interesting so because i'm a little unsure i'm going to get the knight out so then i'm attacking it twice bishop f4 now i can take with tempo which i feel is very important yes because i attack the queen and the c2 pawn 
and my opponent has blundered. It's already moved 12, game over. Check is going to pick up the queen. My opponent, if we go back a move here, had to play queen here. And then I would have played bishop f5 to attack the queen. Check, king here, let's take the queen. Always nice to win a queen on move 13. The king is so exposed. I can go knight d5 check, knight g4 check. A lot of checks look good. Now I just want to make this as instructive as possible. So I want to throw in another tactic, guys, which is e5. Because if take, then I can go knight g4 check, picking up the bishop. So I think that's the most instructive move, therefore I will play it. And my opponent has fallen for it, which is great because then you see all these tactics. I know I'm a queen up, but I'm still going to win properly. Now, by the way, this check was possible as well, but this check looks very good as well. So let's go for that. Game over. If the king comes up, then the bishop comes here. Ah, okay, fine. Now I can take with the bishop, and then it's going to be mate in the middle. Yeah, let's take with check. The cool thing is it is being defended. That's it, man. Game over. If king here, the bishop can come out. If king back, then the queen can come in. And I believe that is checkmate. All squares covered. That's it. 17 move. Victory. Let's go d5. Normally they play d4 first, but we have this on pass on. Very strange situation. But anyway, let's just play this. No queen trade, no point. Now your queen is misplaced. You can't do this. You can't just offer a queen trade. Now I'm going to castle, rook e8, and then face, face you. I'm going to get the bishop out to f5 on a very nice diagonal. I'm going to actually go bishop g4 as well. Queen a5 check means bishop has to retreat. So that's a nice tactic. Bishop g4, then, then move the bishop. Right, let me have a think. Yeah, why not? Let's hit the queen. Don't see why not. Now I can move the bishop here. Let's hit the pawn. Threatening checkmate. Fair play. But I can go here. Oh, interesting. Can, can I go knight h5 actually? Queen here. Interesting. Very interesting. No, let's just block. My opponent has wasted a lot of time with the bishop, with the queen. My opponent has forgotten the bishops. On pre, so that's what we're learning. My opponents are just chucking pieces. Take, or take with a pawn. Game. Let's let's finish it off. Queen here to attack these two. Why not? Rook here to attack. My opponent is going after this pawn. Right. Right, I'm actually going to be fancy. I want to hit this. I know this, but I'm going to go here. Because so I want to go rook check, queen here, and just checkmate as soon as possible. My knight's in the middle. My bishop is there. That's a check. Every piece is in the, in the game. If knight e2, that's a tactic. Take, take, win the queen, game. Let's go. Boom. That's exactly what I wanted. Just wanted to get that in just to show you a very nice tactical shot. So you're... You cannot just get your queen out, just play random pawn moves with your bishop. No, you've got to get your pieces in the game. That's it, man. That's it. Right, let's pick up the queen. In, one, two. Right. How can we come in here, maybe, attacking those two? That looks good as well. One, two. Those are the two soft spots. In. In. That's a soft spot as well. Picking up and my opponent resigns. So, that's cool. After all this, we're up to... 1006. Give this video a like if you found it helpful. I hope you learned a lot from this rating climb. If you want to stick around, we have YouTube's choice over here. However, this is my choice for what to watch next.